just starting into your faith, or maybe you're one of those people that say, the church just asks for my money all the time. People will ask, should I tithe? So let me give a couple basics here as we go along. First of all, tithing, the original word comes from meaning 10th. So when you tithe, you have to give 10% of your income. Now, so you cannot tithe 5%, but you also cannot tithe 13%. When they say tithes and offerings, an offering is anything above that 10%. So let's just stick to tithes for a second. You hear people saying, that's just an Old Testament concept. We aren't asked to be held to that standard anymore as somebody who is following Jesus. Well, let's, let's think about that for just a second. Are all of the teachings from the Old Testament rendered worthless because of the New Testament? My answer would be no. Jesus, his foundation, his faith was built up because of the Bible that he carried. He didn't carry it, obviously, they had scrolls. But the Bible he learned from was the Old Testament. All of his teachings, you can see referenced back to a teaching in the Old Testament. The New Testament does not negate the Old Testament. And we see tithing from the very beginning in Genesis all the way up into the last book uh, of the Old Testament, which is Malachi. And in Malachi chapter 3, I tell people at our church and anybody else that I run into, if you're not tithing 10%, then you're missing out on a blessing of God. Scripture tells us not to test the Lord our God. But it also says in Malachi chapter 3, starting in verse 1, it says, test me in this. Bring your whole tithe into the storehouse and see if I don't throw open the floodgates of heaven and bless you in every way. And he goes on to talk about culturally what that looks like with wine vines and, and different things. So he's saying, there's one place you can test me. There's one place there's a guaranteed blessing, and that is in tithing. Now, that could mean that you win the lottery. It could mean that you get a raise at your job or a new job. It could mean that you stay healthy, so you're not spending money on that. You, you, your car doesn't need repairs or anything. It lasts abnormally long. That's happened to us uh, with quite a few of our cars. So there are different ways that God can bless you that can reap a benefit financially. So let's also look at what does the New Testament say? Jesus references tithing uh, in the New Testament. He's talking to the rabbis. He's saying, you have given up uh, all of the good things that you should be doing, but you should also be tithing along with those things. So there is that. And then let's also think, does Jesus ever lower the bar on expectations from what is said in the Old Testament to the New Testament? The answer for that is also no. Jesus never lowers the bar on what is expected of his followers. So some people will say that's an Old Testament concept. And if you're one of those people that says tithing is just an Old Testament concept, the New Testament concept that you are now held to is give until there are no needs in the church. Do you still have a mortgage on your building? Are you taking care of the ministers in your church? Are you helping out in the community? See, the church was set up and was really supposed to take care of the elderly, the orphans, and the widows. But we can't anymore because people aren't tithing. So now the government has become that part of what the church should be. In any church, any given church across the United States, you get about 10% of the people tithing. If you got 20% of the people tithing, you would be able to pay off your mortgages and you wouldn't have any uh, payment. You'd be able to take care of the homeless shelters, the people that you see on the street all the time. That's just at 20%. If you got 50%, now we're changing the infrastructure of the United States and, and the expectations of the church. So uh, at Catalyst, where, where I am the pastor, we do talk about tithing. We do talk about giving a couple of times a year specifically, but it's also just throughout the scriptures. So it comes up often. And I say, I don't care what you give. Scripture says, wherever your heart is, there also is your money. Or wherever your money is, there also is your heart. So if you're having a problem with tithing, you got to figure out exactly how committed are you to this. Now, I realize that if you're like, okay, I'm just starting to follow Jesus, this whole 10%, that's a big number. I get that. There are two different ways to look at that. First, do you trust God or you don't? And you dive in head first, going straight 10% and believe that God can manage your 90% better than you can manage 100%. Or start 1% a month, give 1% more a month for 10 months and see if God doesn't fill in the gaps. 
see if things don't go a little bit further and a little bit better because you're trusting God to manage your money. And he said, I will bless you if you bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. So I would say if you are not tithing, you are missing out on a blessing that God says, this is the only place that you can test me. So take advantage of that. Also, make sure that you are making sure that your building is upkept, that your people are kept and taken care of. And some of that is just financially. If you are if you're looking around your building and your church, if you're looking around at your staff, if you're looking around at the people there and you feel like they're not being well taken care of, it's because of tithing. It's really just that simple. So if people, if you can go ahead and you can say, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna commit to this now, see the blessings that God starts showing up in your life. At Catalyst Church, one of the things that we do, we give a 100% money back guarantee because either I believe that God is in this or I don't. So if you tithe for 90 days and we can track that what you gave, that after that 90 days, if you do not believe that God threw open the floodgates of heaven, we will write you a check and give you 100% of your money back. So if you're right now, you're like, I don't really have a place that I'm going. I don't know what exactly I'm doing, but I want to try this tithing thing. You're welcome to set up catalystchurch.org. Uh, and there's a place there that you can give. You can try it with us. I would say find a local body that you are a part of, that you can invest in. But if you want to go ahead and try it, you can go to catalystchurch.org or catalystchurch.info. And there's a place for you to give there. And you can start tithing here. But send me or somebody an email, catalystchurch.org. Uh, nc at gmail.com send us an email and we'll go ahead and track that for you and then you can start figuring out what God's going to do with the blessings if you're in Greensboro North Carolina you make sure to come join me at 10 a.m. on Sunday and I'll make sure to save you a seat 